guys. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday webinars. We have a special guest tonight, or today, this afternoon, um, Susanna Freeman. I call her Susanna from Montana. She has the Great Turning Healing Center in Bozeman. And I am pleased to say that I am her new medical director. And it's awesome because we both have different expertise. So putting them together creates an even more integrative health opportunity for everybody. So I'm gonna make Susanna the host so she can talk to us about Chinese medicine and how Chinese medicine is really the original functional medicine. Okay. Take it away. Thanks, Paula. All righty. So as Paula said, I wanna chat about functional medicine and Chinese medicine in really in that uh, they really are speaking to the same, uh, the same root. So yes, I believe that Chinese medicine is the world's original functional medicine, and here's why. So let's go through a few definitions, and then I want to chat with you today about a few of our patients who have been through this time of COVID with some health issues and how they've come through with shining colors and doing really well with this model. So, so just to start, let's start with functional medicine. What is it and what is it not? So functional medicine, you can also call it uh, integrative medicine. Paula, I'll let you speak to the difference between integrative and functional medicine. Um, it's easy to say what it's not first. Let's get that out of the way. What it's not is a substitute for working with your primary care doctor, unless your primary care doctor is somebody like Paula, then you're in business because you've got it all right there under one, one roof. But sometimes your primary care doctor is not gonna have the expertise, extra training to do the preventive, integrative, collaborative, on the ground, how to address chronic issues like somebody who's trained in integrative and preventive medicine like our very own Dr. Paula. So, so if you need medications, surgery, you uh, just broke your leg, um, you're about, you're in the middle of a heart attack, please call 911 and get yourself to the hospital, okay? So that's what functional medicine is not. Now, what is it? It's when you go to the doctor and you say, Doc, I don't feel well. I haven't felt well in a while. They say, let's run your labs. And they run your labs and they say, your labs look great. And so then what? They say, they say, well, go home and get a little more exercise, drink a little more water and clean up your diet and uh, call me if that doesn't work. So you call them back and, and um, you say it didn't work. And so they say, take this little pill. You'll be better, honey. Okay, so sorry, that was a little bit of, anyway. Um, so there are times for medications. A lot of our patients are on medications. We never tell a uh, patient to get off their meds. That's a conversation between them and their doctor. What we do is try to enhance the body's ability to heal. And so one of my favorite quotes is from Dr. Mark Hyman from the Institute of Functional Medicine. He's a leader in the world of functional medicine and he says, one, what is the cause? Two, get rid of the bad stuff, meaning diet, screen time, whatever it is that's getting in the way, the four stressors. Three, put in the good stuff, and that's what we teach you how to do. And four, let the body heal. That's Dr. Mark Hyman. I think it sums up functional medicine beautifully. So, so you and your doctor are partners in this venture to get to the underlying cause of what is not working in your body and in your health world. So that is functional medicine. We'll chat more about that. It's very much an integration. It's getting to the root cause. So Chinese medicine. Any, anything to add there, Paula, well, before I jump on to Chinese uh, Do you medicine? want me to say what integrative medicine is? Yes, please. So... So good on functional medicine. I think of functional medicine as getting your pathways in order so they function well. Mm -hmm. um, because when our cellular <laughs> pathways work well, everything else works better. What's an so, example of a pathway? So like an antioxidant pathway in the body. So our body makes antioxidant enzymes, but as we age, our production of those enzymes decreases, but we can boost up that pathway so it still functions better 
and make more antioxidant enzymes as we age instead of less. So how would that make, help me feel better? So um, a gross oversimplification. At the root of almost every chronic disease is inflammation and oxidative stress. Mm. Your antioxidant enzymes get rid of that. Nice. That's what they do on our bodies. That's why we have more chronic disease and pain and issues as we age because those enzymes decrease. So I think a functional medicine very much is kind of pathway medicine. Got and it. I'm a total nerd and I love it. I think of integrative medicine as taking everything we have out there and bringing it together. Huh. So I don't call it alternative because that's a this or this. It's one or the other. Mm -hmm. I don't call it complementary because that's supporting something else. I call it integrative because it's using everything we know together. Western medicine, Eastern medicine, Chinese medicine, Tibetan medicine, indigenous medicine, natural medicine, functional medicine, preventive, whatever integrated all together as a whole mm -hmm. we're not parsing out one piece at a time we're bringing people together so that's why like our collaboration is amazing because i have a basic understanding of chinese medicine and chinese herbs i do not have the understanding you have right and they're i mean they've been around for, for thousands of years right and they're fabulous so bringing that in and it's all very patient specific. What works better with somebody, Chinese medicine or uh, a, a more Western herbal approach or whatever. So it's being able to bring that all together, which makes us even more integrated, which is I'm very excited about. I'm drooling a little. So you go ahead and talk about Chinese medicine. Well, that's a perfect segue, thank you. And what I was thinking as you were saying that is that, well, that sounds like a lot for any one person to know. Maybe it would be better to have a collaborative venture so that, so that we can all have our, our special piece of the puzzle. So yours is pathways, mine is Chinese medicine, right? And then we pull them together for an individualized approach for that patient. And then the patient is the expert in their body. Exactly. Right? So, so we've all got our area of expertise and then we try to pull them together. And yes, it would be overwhelming to try to do it all. And it would be overwhelming in any one person's body to try to do it all. Like when I was in school, I was interested in, in um, Ayurvedic medicine, so I'm like, I'm gonna learn it all. And I could, I got so scrambled trying to understand the Ayurvedic model along with Chinese medicine, I finally had to drop it. So I still have patients who come to see me who are interested in Ayurvedic medicine, and I know enough to help them segue, translate, and put them together, but I can't say that I'm an Ayurvedic specialist. So, um, so that's one example of how we're gonna we're gonna pull out the puzzle pieces of that make sense for that individual and use those, right? So, perfect, Chinese medicine um, has been doing this for 2000 years in a very real way. The Chinese herbal formulas that I use, most of them are have their roots in the original textbook that's approximately 2000 years old. And then they've been modified through the years, through this long lineage of, gee, well, in the Han Dynasty, the scholars thought that this, 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 and this, or in the 1950s, the doctors thought, well, gee, maybe we could use this herbal formula for this purpose. So we have this unbroken line of teaching and education and understanding. And that's one of the beauties of Chinese medicine is, is we have that unbroken lineage. And now we're taking it into modern medicine, integrating it with what we know know in modern Western biomedical research, how does this herb work and how can we use it in an integrative or functional model, right? So, so when Chinese medicine was at last translated into the United States, it was roughly in 1970, that's its own whole other story, and, and it got translated really poorly. And so it got translated as acupuncture, and what got left out is the, what we call today the three T's, the testing, the treatment, and the teaching. So that's a huge part of Chinese medicine, or traditional Chinese medicine, or Asian medicine, is using a complex diagnostic system to get to the root of the problem. 
okay? That's one, that's the testing. And there's all kinds of clinical exams. Now we pull in modern medicine. We use Dr. Paula and say, Paula, can you run that blood chemistry and find out what that person's hemoglobin A1C is, okay? So we use that and then we plug it into the Chinese medical model of, okay, that person likely has liver chi stagnation or spleen damp. What does that mean? What that means is that they have digestive issues and blood sugar management issues. And so then, so there's your diagnosis, then you treat them with Chinese herbs, acupuncture, and then you teach them how to eat and when to eat. And, and teach them how to work with their stress and teach them what foods are good for their body, what foods are not so good for their body, what time of day is a good time to eat, above all making sure that you're not overloading them with too much information that they can't, they can't actually follow through on. So doesn't that kind of sound, Paula, like what we've been doing all along in the functional medicine model? Exactly. Okay, so here's the rub is that is when people think of acupuncture, they think of an Asian person who doesn't speak their language, who, who sticks a whole bunch of needles in them and then leaves the room and says nothing, or if they say something, you can't understand them. And so here I am, I'm a white person in Bozeman, Montana, and I can't tell you, Paula, go home and eat this red bean paste. <laughs> I can't tell you, right? I might be able to tell you to eat some miso soup. Mm. I might be able to tell you to eat some bone broth, but probably not chicken gizzard, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just coming up with some sort of outlandish concepts of there are things that people in China have been eating for 500 and 2,000 years that we in the West uh, do not recognize. So we've had to translate the nutritional and the herbal and the cultural principles into what I would call functional medicine. So my job as an acupuncturist is to make the traditional teachings and the traditional diagnosis, like what's liver chi stagnation? Well, it feels like PMS in a woman. It feels like irritable bowel syndrome. It feels like depression or anxiety. It feels like tension and irritability. What do we do about that? Here's what we do, right? So my job is to translate into, into what works for this person, speak my language, and make that treatment and that nutritional and that herbal uh, formula fit that person in the region in which they live, in the life in which they live, in the family in which they live, and make it real, right? Without all of the clutter of the cultural divide with, I don't know what you're saying because I'm not Asian. So we trans, it's a lot of my work is translation, okay? But what we're really talking about is testing, treatment, teaching, okay? Nice. So you find out the underlying cause, you take out the bad stuff, you put in the good stuff, and you let the body heal. Thank you, Mark Hyman, kind of sums it up. So, um, so, so don't get too hung up on the Chinese terminology, Japanese terminology, um, it's really very translatable. Chinese medicine is, has been successfully um, introduced to every country in the world. Uh, Europe is doing a lot of work with it and making it, um, adding their own spin on things, adding their own research. It's all over the U.S. China is doing, continuing to do a lot of research. There's a lot coming out of Taiwan and China. Vietnam, Korea is really big. All over Asia, all over Europe, there's a lot, there's a lot of research happening that's super exciting. And now we're putting it together with um, modern um, medicine, conventional medicine, in it, integrating it. This is really cool. Anything to add, Paula? I, I like love the names of some of the things. Like mm -hmm. I can't say they're Chinese names, but when they ahead, translate try. into like free and easy wander. Right. That's the like, one. Who doesn't like, want to be that? Right. It's like <laughs> awesome. The Chinese so, say every American has liver chi stagnation. Right. Right. It, which, um, by the way, is a problem in the liver, it's not liver disease, it's a pathways problem that gets to our inability to detoxify. And, and there, again, we need to work on our pathways and then we feel better and we feel freer and easier. Right, it's beautiful, it's all that. 
So often we'll put together, we'll give somebody something to support their antioxidant pathways and we'll also give them free and easy wonder. And we put the two together. I do Can that. I 